Okay, we're live. Good morning, everyone. For those that are joining, we'll just give it a couple of minutes. Um, we do have a great number of attendees today, so it just may be a couple of minutes. So let's get the numbers up and we'll start very shortly. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason Jones, uh, president of the New York State Parking and Transportation Association. We're very happy to have you here today. Um, we have uh, on the webinar today, Hank, uh, with their contactless payment presentation, in addition to Port Jefferson and how that relates to a case study. So uh, we're very happy to have uh, Casey Siskin, uh, from Hogg and Kevin Wood from the village of Port Jefferson. Uh, we uh, have been working on this for a few months now, so we're very excited to welcome all of you. And just for some general uh, notes that uh, the presentation will be roughly 45 minutes to 50, 45 to 50 minutes uh, with some time at the end for questions. Uh, however, you, the audience is encouraged to ask questions throughout uh, to make it more of an interactive presentation. You know, let's not save everything till the end and um, that'll be very helpful. I'm sure uh, both Casey and Kevin will cover a majority of your questions. However, um, feel free to interject either through the Q&A mechanism or the chat feature. Um, our New York State Parking and Transportation Association event and association manager, Dawn Marte, uh, will be monitoring that. So. Um, every so often, we, if we see something in the Q&A or the chat, we'll, we'll jump in and, and see if the panelists are, are able to answer that or in a position to. So, but again, we're, we're very excited to have everybody. And as we were talking on the pre-call a little bit here is that as we um, really over the last year and a half uh, within the association um, have had uh, several webinars uh, by attendance, this is our largest one. So we're very excited. Uh, that you know, webinar fatigue has has not set in. It's actually the numbers have grown, so we're uh, very very excited to see that. And you know, um, right now it's you know the um, New York State Parking and Transportation Association is really going into our next phase of uh, this. You know, what is, what's it been over the last year and a half, right? So we're gearing up for our fall conference in October. Uh, we're gearing up for our renewals of membership, and you can really see um, some things coming back to normal. Even here at the University of Albany, uh, we had graduation this week, and the people that are coming out are just very excited, very friendly, uh, and we hope to have, again, we can see the numbers on this webinar, can see the numbers at the university for the fall conference. Things are really coming back, especially here in New York State, one of the hardest hit areas uh, of the early days of the pandemic. So, uh, with that being said, again, we're very happy to have Casey and Kevin here today. Uh, without further ado, please take it away. 
All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so, so much for coming out and joining us today. Uh, we're really excited and happy to be here. Um, so we're going to take you through our presentation. Uh, my name is Casey Siskind. I am the Senior Vice President at Honk. I've uh, been with the company from day one, so I've been in parking for about eight years now. And uh, it is my absolute pleasure to speak to you today about contactless payment, give you a little bit of info on Honk and, uh, and, and be here with Kevin, um, who is one of our incredible customers. And we've done some really amazing work with Kevin. So we're going to walk you through all of what that means. Uh, Kevin, you want to introduce yourself as well? Yes, absolutely. My name is Kevin Wood. I am the parking administrator in Port Jefferson Village. It's a northern facing, if you will, right on the harbor in Long Island, Suffolk County. And it's a pleasure to be with you all here today. All right. So, um, yeah, so we're just sort of working through our introductions. This is a bit of our agenda for the day. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about consumer trends, uh, touch free payments. Uh, and then we're going to get into, uh, with Kevin, our case study and how we've worked together and what we've created with Kevin. And then at the end, we'll do a Q&A. So we're going to be conscious of our time. But as Jason said, like, anytime you guys have questions, just sort of pop in and let, and let us know. So I just want to give you a little bit of background on Honk. We've been in the parking industry for eight years now. Um, our CEO was in the payments industry before parking. He actually sold his company. Uh, and then got into this. So there's a lot of synergy between what he was doing before in terms of being working within the payment spectrum and, uh, and then bringing that forward to Honk and to parking. Um, Honk is located in both the US and Canada. We are operating in you know, 150 cities across North America at this point. Um, and you know what I love to say about Honk is we've got this really all encompassing platform. Um, that really focuses on everything you would ever need within the parking world. So, you know, we do reservations, on-demand parking, permitting and monthly, obviously daily. Um, you know, we've got a nice big robust uh, back office um, with that, an incredible promo code solution. We deal in event rates, um, you know, working with on-street, off-street, colleges and universities, municipalities, airports, you kind of name it. And then the last kind of couple of things that we've been dealing in is uh, is one of our newest products is called the Flex Pass, uh, which we probably won't get into too much today. But that is like a multi pack of parking. So um, you know the idea of not a permit and not the daily rate, but something in between, almost like a scratch card. So that's something we've been working on as well. You know during COVID, where we kind of took a step back and we're like, whoa, what do we do now? <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's Honk, and that's who we are. Uh, lovely little company. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, so I want to bring this in now to trends in consumer behavior um, and in transit period. So as we're sort of emerging from this world that we've all been living in in the last year and a half, this crazy world, um, we're starting to see different trends uh, coming through. So the first one would be um, in this area, this era of COVID, we're seeing about 93% of drivers using their cars more often. So versus public transit, right? Um, and then we're talking about maybe 47% who are looking to reduce their uses of public transit coming out of this, which for all of us parking people is a very interesting thing and uh, kind of, you know, the good and the bad with all of that. Um, not enough parking spots or whatever, but we are seeing, um, you know, these, these trends. So we are going to have to plan for this, right? Um, and then there's sort of this idea of this hybrid remote-based office concept, right? So I may not go to the office five days a week. I may only go three days a week. But then again, whereas I may have been taking public transit in the past, I might be driving more often. So there's going to be this sort of interesting behavior that we're all going to need to look at to see how this is all going to play out and how we may have to change our operations just a little bit and make it more accessible for people. Uh, and then this focuses on trends in consumer behavior around payment. Um, so we know right now that of contactless transactions, um, oh. they range, right? Sorry about that, like $25 purchase. 80% uh, of them kind of sit in that bucket. Um, the overall usage of contactless payments obviously has grown. Like, look at that number. It's pretty intense. Um, I mean, I, I just know in general that somebody who maybe wasn't using their Apple Pay or didn't understand it, you know, my mom, for example, or some, you know, uh, just in general people that 
we're starting to figure out how to deal in contactless payment, how to use their phones more often, how to tap, how to, you know, all of this idea. So it's not surprising that we're seeing this number because people stopped wanting to touch things. 78% um, of consumers globally made the change that they, the way that they chain, sorry, the way that they pay has sh shifted dramatically during COVID. 75% um, prefer contactless over other forms of payment. So you know, working in this contactless space. Yes, that's amazing. But now we have to figure out how to speak to these 75% of people and how to engage them and how to make sure they're happy and how to make sure we have some flexible components in our systems. So that's kind of where, you know, the idea of honk comes into play. Um, and then 74% are going to continue to use their contactless payments post pandemic. So, you know, we're seeing this major shift. Obviously, we're going deeper and deeper, deeper into the contactless payment world. And then we kind of see here, you know, whereas contactless payments used to be a nice to have, it's becoming a need to have in your operation and in your organizations. So, you know, I always, we keep joking that this, the QR code has had a bit of a renaissance during COVID, you know, whereas before, you know, you knew QR codes were out there. You maybe scanned it to see if you could win a prize or something along those lines. Now people are using QR code for actual payment and it's growing and it's growing and it's growing. So we need to access QR. We need to figure out how to get them into the systems because uh, people really want to see that. So tap QR code um, apps all along the spectrum of contactless in the wild, right? Like we're out there, we're using it. You go to a restaurant, you scan the menu. Um, whether you're paying for it or not, you're using this contact list in, in some form and it's just gonna to continue to grow going forward because it's easy and it works. And this is sort of how we're seeing contact lists extend into the parking industry. So, you know, the idea of tapping or scanning to pay for parking, guest checkout, not having to download an app, um, but still getting the same benefits and still, you know, using your phone to pay for things makes it super easy. Um, you know, definitely making sure that your parking lots are curated nicely so that people can actually see what they're doing and how they can use the contactless system. Uh, Cause like we said before, I think it's becoming more of a need to have than a nice to have. Um, and so then we started to get into, we really want to talk to you today about Kevin and his operation and sort of fill you in on what happened going from the past. Like this is actually, you know, a really interesting one to see where you take a solution, you know, something that Kevin decided he was just going to shift it and, and create an entire new system for, for his, you know, his parkers and it's working really, really, really well. So um, we replaced uh, the pay stations with honk tap in the summer of 2020 uh, it was a busy summer. Uh, it was, you know, a very aggressive thing to do. And it's been an incredible experience working with Kevin. And uh, with that, I am going to let Kevin take over for a bit and tell you what happened here. Sure. Great job, Casey. Fantastic. Um, I think I want to tell the audience about our marketplace because I know people all around New York State are online right now. Uh, we're a small, quaint seaside village. Uh, we have um, a downtown that is surrounded by hills and water. So what we have is what we will always have. There is no ability to expand uh, geographically. There's no ability to expand uh, and build more parking lots, to be honest. Um, I just had gotten finished with leading the charge of building the first small parking lot, beautiful parking lot, 46 spaces, only a week ago. But that's it. That'll be... Uh, that'll be it for us. Uh, probably not going multi-deck. So uh, 46 spaces were added and here we are. So we manage uh, now 646 paid parking spaces. We did in 2017 when I got in the position with Port Jefferson Village, I inherited and started to learn about parking meters, not being in this business at all before 2017. So we had 23 pay stations. And uh, I'll tell you a quick story, and I'll, I'll never forget it. I had my head in a machine, servicing the machine, uh, which of course I had to learn, but uh, that's fine. Uh, I got to know the machines and uh, I was in a machine and, it's, and a gentleman came up uh, and said, do you know who I am? And I said, uh, no. And he said, I'm the guy to put these machines here. And I immediately cursed him out. And it was like the most craziest thing. We're very good friends now. And uh, he's actually 
somewhat of a mentor because he's a real smart guy. But what I meant was, oh my God, how much uh, maintenance has to go into these machines? This is beyond like incredible. Uh, I just felt that it was extremely, from the beginning, the day I got there, it was extremely inefficient. I felt out of sorts with having, uh, you know, parking meters uh, servicing uh, people. Just to give you an idea of our volume, 600 spaces, um, 4,800 uh, parking sessions last week. We probably will do in excess of 5,000 parking sessions this week. We're now better than pre-pandemic or, you know, before the pandemic numbers at this point. So we have a lot of in and out. We have um, we have we have the need to really get people parking fast. So this took a few years, but uh, as Casey had pointed out, I said to myself, um, you know, the meters are getting old. There was a certain faction of the 23 meters that are getting old, and we had to make a choice: uh, were we going to replace those meters? Were we going to look for another vendor? Uh, were we going to, you know, try to revamp the meters? Um, and it just became really, really clear to me to turn those meters into digital kiosks, uh, which is which is what we started to do in 2020. And yes, the pandemic sort of helped that out, but pandemic or not pandemic, we we definitely would have gone that way. So Rachel, if you're in the background, we could we can show a, a picture of actually if, if you have to go ahead and then come back, that's fine too. Uh, because I want to just show an example of the actual meter being um, if you will transitioned okay, into take down to that picture. Yeah, yeah, if you can go, I think it's that number 14, 14 retrofit. Okay, let's let's stay here for a second, then we can go back. Um, so this was a meter um, that took coins, tokens, credit card, cash, in some cases cash. And so we retrofitted and designed a placard, very simple, um, to be retrofitted onto the meter. And one day a parker woke up and instead of putting in money, they tapped or scanned, as you can see on the left-hand side. And then we went a step above that and we created these um, parking maps. It certainly serves as a parking map. But what I train my parking ambassadors to do, and we can talk about that later if you'd like, or myself, is that people really don't even have to do anything. They can just take this into their restaurant, order their favorite cocktail, point their phone towards this, and invoke a parking session. So you have three digital ways right in front of you on how to uh, to pay for parking. Then over and above that, if you're just a, a stodgy old man or lady and you just want to use that meter, you can see in the yellow there, hey, do you still want to use your favorite meter? Just please walk to the next nearest one. And we can go back if you'd like. And the idea is the, the meters that we kept in service were meters that were bought and installed from 2018 on. So robust brand new meters is what we ended up doing. So we didn't replace meters. We turned them into digital kiosks and we kept the newest meters in place. So we now have 12 meters down from 23 meters. Just go, maybe go one slide back. I just want to see what was there. Sure, yeah, yeah. This was sort of your parking before honk, like what you what, what you were dealing with before. Yep, yep. Place. And then these were the challenges that you were facing and how you kind of came to the decision to move on. Right. There you go. And so just looking at uh, some of these pictures and slides, sure, there's there's six or seven different expense categories that have to do with physical meters, paper, modem, communications, maintenance, insurance. There's at least two more, by the way. Um, we did have extra people we had to put on staff for that. Uh, and they had to be experts in kind of uh, mechanics, if you will. Uh, we found that in 2020, unfortunately, for whatever reason, we had a, a blackout in communication. So all of our meters didn't take credit cards. Um, so we quickly retrofitted the actual credit card slot to be able to take, um, you know, a phone and a QR code. It was, it was really different, but we had to do it. We were forced to do it. Um, so it worked out. Um, not a pleasant experience because people, you know, had to learn it on the fly, but most people uh, got it really quickly. Points of failure. Yeah, of course, if, unless you maintain these all the time, you definitely have these points of failure here. Paper constantly being changed because we do such volume. Coin stuck, cash stuck, uh, and as I mentioned, unreliable communications network, which was out of our, by the, that was completely out of our control. We don't control that uh, communications network. Uh, yes, lost revenue, but much more frustration than lost revenue as well. So um, I'll just speak to this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, 
the the thing is we we like to uh to talk about the app versus you know contactless qr payment uh, or we call it honk tap so you know not everybody wants to download an app apps are amazing we have an app right so we're we're, we're in the business but we understand that there are definitely some people um that either just don't want to download it or they're just visiting and it doesn't make sense for them to download. Like if I'm going to a new city and I have a rental car, I may or may not want to download that app. I just don't necessarily want it on my phone. So I need flexible new ways to pay. Um, and so we we had to like create a concept of ways of, of a guest checkout so that people didn't necessarily have to download the app. You know, your power users, people that are coming to Port Jeff every weekend, um, are going to be open to downloading it because it just makes sense to have that on their phone and they open it and they go, but there are definitely going to be people that don't. And you can sort of speak to where you were hovering in terms of your parking transactions in mobile adoption. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I have to say this was probably the, um, the touch point that really did it for us and Honk is that uh, I was out in the parking lots and I constantly heard that they uh, did not want to download a new app and I want to say this as, as, as respectfully as I can, and, and I've said this uh, to many vendors, that this industry to me has not produced a MasterCard, Visa, American, American Express yet of the cashless uh, parking um, industry. So I didn't feel that it was very important to have the same app as a town next door or New York City or anything like that. Um, I felt that the guest QR code made a lot of sense because people I heard it time and time again, just did not want to download another app and they still don't. And we see that in our numbers. Uh, so we proved that out. You might have take uh, a look at that 3% because that's an important number. I just want to point that out. Sure, absolutely. So uh, at, the, at this point, we had used another mobile vendor. Um, that mobile vendor has since gone out of business and we were at top, we were at 3%. That would be the top line number, meaning 3% of our total sessions were paid by the app. Uh, okay, so you know, here's Kevin. He's got this system going on. He's it's working. It's sort of, but there's issues happening. Um, and then enter Honk, uh, and we're looking at uh, converting his existing hardware into tap stations, which we showed you that picture. Um, and Kevin, you can sort of sure. speak to yeah, this what your, your vision was maybe what your vision was here. Yeah, this is an example of an existing meter. And I do like these these meters because uh, the video that you see up above there, I mean, it's daylight, daylight there, but there's a video that actually runs the Honk Mobile, uh, um, if you will, uh, promotion. So uh, we're constantly trying to, you know, invoke and promote uh, going from meter to digital payments. So that's why we kept the newer meters. One of the reasons uh, they were also more robust and much more, um, you know, they, they were more functionally correct. So this is an example of a newer meter with the uh, tap or scan on the side of the meter. This one was not retrofitted, but you have a choice. Hey, Kevin and Casey, let me ask a question. And you also have a, it's Jason. You yeah, have a I nice do. comment in here that all pro uh, is a huge proponent of your honk, tap and scan and pay. So super easy to use and great service. So uh, a good shout out there. Thank uh, you to All Pro. We love our All Pro people. <laughs> yes. And I guess, Kevin, this question would be for you. And maybe you touched upon it, but you had indicated that in 2018, you had meters installed or a device yes. installed, right? But by 2020, you had already moved forward with a different installation. How and why did you quick pivot so quickly? And did Honk allow you, like how, I mean, in order to get that up and running by 2020, you must have engaged Honk probably by 2019, or you know, if you had gone out for a bid, you must have engaged them very quickly within a year of those installs. Well, at Port Jefferson, we have um, we have this one advantage that we are, our metered program, our paid parking program is shut down from December 7th to April 1st. In the case of 2020, it was July 1st, but that's a lot of time. Sorry about that. Uh, a lot of time for us to get a lot done. So I, I have that advantage. So my operation in turn, these meters are covered. Uh, so that was the period which I, which I did a lot of my homework and a, a lot of talking. 
And we were able to do that. The, the meat, you're right. I mean, we we took old meters and we retrofitted them. I'm sorry, we replaced them. I think it was seven or eight meters, and that's what you see still standing. I think we, I think we spent somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars. So in my mind, I want those meters to probably last their useful life, five, six years. Um, I should mention this, the day I got on the job in 2017, I put above my desk, we'll be meter list by 2023. I tell people that all the time. Um, and I think it's gonna happen. I, I think that's an incredible thing. And I wanna do that in a way that doesn't, by the way, uh, get anybody frustrated or leave anybody out. And we, we'll talk about that later. Um, very important, that one little line there, same rate, no fees, I didn't mention that. That was very important to us too, so that whether somebody used a meter or they used digital cash payments, that $1 an hour was still $1 an hour net to the parker. Um, I felt very strongly from the beginning that I didn't want it to be $1.25, $1.35, $1.40, whatever that might be. Uh, we we uh, were instrumental in uh, eating that fee, uh, knowing that in the long run we're saving money over maintenance and those seven costs that I spoke about. We, we talk about that a lot at Honk, you know, that sort of the battle between who pays for the, that convenience fee and how did that work? Because a lot of times you look and say like, you know, as we move more and more into this contactless space, like why are people being punished for using the actual, right? The hardware that's sitting there versus something that's super easy and that doesn't, you know, that, you know, at the end of the day potentially saves the operator money. So th there is that battle. And I understand why people don't at this stage of the game, but maybe going forward, that may change and they may, you know, people may want to do what you're doing, Kevin, for sure. Um, hey, so if, you, if you wouldn't mind going back to that sign again, because yep. there's, there's a lot to this um, that I think we do uh, differently. Um, and I hope, you know, that it's a positive. We do literally have a 24 hour text helpline. That's not a monitored helpline. I mean, it is a monitored helpline. It's real uh, with real people behind it um, that will answer questions. That's really important to us. Um, we have a website. If everybody just says, hey, I don't, want, I don't know how to do any of this. You can go to, to the website. You see that on the bottom. And um, we, we're even strong enough to say that the sentence there, never visit a meter again. You don't have to visit a meter again. People are so trained oh my God, if I don't use the meter, am I gonna be okay? And they're slowly learning. It's a process. Yeah. Yeah, and we have two, and we guys, we have uh, two things here that uh, touch upon these topics is that one, again, all pro, they find many of their scanners and tappers convert to the app. So right on the suggest that people are embracing that technology, which is a great thing. Uh, secondly, I'll say uh, your conversion and as quickly as you did, it really shows both the nimbleness of poor Jeff and so that is a great testament in an industry that often takes a while to transition technology. So you did that very fast. And thirdly, Kevin, for you directly from Lex of Park Mobile, uh, what does the utilization between the app and tap to pay transactions actually look like? Meaning, ask the question again, please. Sure. So what does the utilization between the app and tap to pay transactions look like? Maybe uh, what's meant to say maybe cash transactions? So the adoption rate of people using digital as compared to meters? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Okay. So at last, at last count, that's gone from what I said was two to 3% tops to 45% last week. Quite significant. So 45% of all sessions, and I mentioned there was 4,800, there'll be over 5,000 this week, 4,800 sessions last week. Of those 4,800 sessions, 45% of those sessions were paid digitally. Yeah, I just want to reiterate too, you know, the idea of like the guest checkout versus the app. And we're going to show you here how to use TAP, like how it works. Um, but it, it really is that concept of you, you, and you get both, right? So you get the app. If people do want to download and use their app, that that that's all good. Like it's it works the same. It's just that it gives people the options. We really, we really. I'm sort of going back to this idea of flexibility, giving people different options what they need in in the world of contactless payment, right? So, and having you know a couple of pay stations on your lot may still create that level of flexibility. There may be people who still want to use cash. You can convert your meters to cash only. But in terms of, you know, the idea of contactless, it's like opening up the spectrum and allowing people to have different options. Um, so this is on tap.
And then, you know, we just wanted to give you guys an opportunity if you want to open up your QR scanners and give this a try. This will just give you the opportunity to see, um, you know, how it works. So you can just scan that QR code that's on the screen. It'll bring up Honk Tap. Um, uh, the payment process, you can use Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, enter a credit card. Um, it's super fun, super functional, super easy. So it just allows you to have that, you know, easy to pay, double click on your phone and go on with your day. Um, we will email you a receipt. We will allow you to top up. So, uh, but that's optional. So at the end of your payment, the payment process, we will say, do you wanna uh, add time to your parking? If yes, please send us your phone number or please give us your phone number. And then we'll send you a text message knowing, letting you know that your time um, is up for your parking. And then you can top up from wherever you are. Again, same as the app. Um, so, you know, the functionality works the same way for both, but this is just that guest checkout process. So I'm assuming everybody's had the chance. Oh, and then I just want to go back one last little thing on this piece is that there are promo codes available in there. So for any of our colleges and universities, especially who are on this call, um, I, I just, you know, promo codes become a really big feature of Honk. Um, you're able to, you know, you have somebody coming to do a speaking engagement, I mean, in any operation and you want to give free parking and you can track them, you can trace them, uh, you can create them. We do event rates, uh, you can change the rates on your own. So there's a self-service portal. So there is a lot to the system, but I just want to kind of bring it back to that. When you see that little promo code piece, that's a really important part of the system. Hey, Casey and Kevin, we have a few more. Would you like to continue or would you like no, to? No, now's a great time. Go ahead. Absolutely. Hey, perfect. Great. Um, so we do have, actually, uh, they're, they're flowing in fast and furious. So uh, <laughs> you, you've really excited the audience. So that's a, a very good thing. So we have a couple questions and a couple chats and feel free. Again, we got time at the end. So if you want to answer some now, we'll answer some later. But uh, first for Kevin, for you, really a question about buy-in from Port Jeff. You know, like, yeah. What, yeah, bought, how, did that, how did that occur? Did you have the buy-in straight, you know, right away? Uh, so, did you have multiple meetings, you know, really, what was your, what was your process to get this moving? Were a majority of the people for it or, you know, kind of against it? I mean, it's, it's changing technologies very quickly. So how did you, how did you make that happen and get the buy-in so quickly from Port Jeff? Thanks, Jason. And uh, I can also see the question here uh, from Sylvia. So thank you. Um, I'm fortunate enough to uh, really have the support of the mayor and the trustees here. Um, I guess it's a testament to trust and the fact that my background before parking was media and promotion. So if I latch on to something, I really uh, latch on to it. Uh, I, I really promote it hard. Um, the buy-in was pretty immediate. Uh, it was not, quote unquote, a hard sell and everybody was behind it. I want to mention that Port Jefferson is a walkable village. So you you don't even ride bicycles in Port Jefferson. It's extremely walkable. If you go from one end of town to the other, we're talking about a total of, um, Jason, I don't know if I'm on. I, I think you want to mute so that I'm on because I see your green thing. I don't know. You let me know, Rachel or Dawn, if I'm on. because You're okay. You're good. You're good. Oh, good. Okay. Yep. From one end of town to another, it's... Um, it's a few minutes at, at most. So it wasn't a large inconvenience, but I will tell you that we recently had, this is a total case study. We recently had a restaurant that said to us, hey, people are going to the digital media um, uh, meter, uh, the kiosk, they're a little older, they either don't have cell phones or don't wanna mess with them, and they have to walk 100 feet to the next near, nearest meter. And so we took that seriously. So what we're going to do um, it's a win-win. We've already uh, decided we're doing it. We're going to put a kiosk uh, whereby somebody can play by the old credit card, right? And they'll be able to do that uh, as probably as soon as next week. So that will uh, tackle that program, uh, problem. Um, it'll still be digital, but it will uh, not be a meter as we know it. So that's one way to do that. But it was, it was a pretty swift and uh, good buy-in by our trustees and mayor. We're very yeah, lucky. We have... Oh, go ahead, Casey. I'm sorry. I said, we feel very lucky, Kevin. It's always nice. Listen, I've been in parking long enough now to know that these, sometimes, you know, the sales can take a long time to get from A to B or to C or D. And uh, and Kevin was gracious enough to just like make the decision and go for it. So uh, it was, it was a, this was a very unique, very special situation. <laughs> 
And thank you for allowing uh, me to jump in every so often. And yeah, of course. There's a great balance here between keeping the presentation going and answering some questions. So, but you know, again, interaction is very good, and I'm and I'm sure you'll get to all your slides. So I got two more, and I think one might be quick, and one might be a little more. Uh, one from the private sector, and one from the public sector. So uh, we'll start with the public sector, coming from our friends at Stony Brook University. Yep. Uh, if you use the app first contactless payment, does the customer pay the fee? That might be for both of you because how the system set up, right? So again, mm -hmm. if you use the app first contactless payment, does the customer pay the fee? So I just want to uh, reiterate that we see these both as contactless payment. So the app is contactless, right? Like contactless just means you're you're just not touching anything, right? So you're just able to like swipe and go or tap and go or scan and go. Um, or pull up your app and move on. So it's, it's all really in the contactless bucket. Um, the way Honk works is that is completely up to you. So you decide who pays that fee. It's, it's the, the, your operation can pay for it or the Parker can pay for it. And you get to make that choice. You know, we could even split it. Like there's, there's a million different ways that you can go about this. Um, you could pay 10 cents and the Parker could pay 15 cents, whatever, you know, whatever it comes down to. It also depends on your rates, what set that fee might be. So um, I think there, there are multiple options around this. Honk is a very flexible unit as a whole. So there's a lot of options in terms of, I think one of the biggest things when we got into this business is that we realized parking is, um, is complicated on many levels and every operation is different um, and it's completely fragmented. So what we needed to do as a company is to create, I keep going back to this idea of flexibility, but we needed to create um, a system that was completely flexible to all of these different operations. You know, cities run differently than universities and, uh, you know, private operators have their own things that they like to see, but not every private operator is the same. So we've created a really robust, flexible solution that allows you to do what you need for your operation. I would say that, I hope that answers that question. And, and I wanted to just jump in on that and directly answer what we chose to do, whether they're paying by uh, tap scan or app, the Parker does not realize a charge. So I think I think that's what Stony Brook wanted to know. They don't see a surcharge on their credit card statement or their Google Pay or their PayPal. <laughs> Hopefully Venmo soon, by the way. Okay, and we'll take one more and then we'll keep the presentation going. I've asked uh, Dawn to unmute um, Molly from Passport, uh, our good friend. So if she's available, she has a, a two-phased question here. Uh, if she's not available to unmute, I'll, I'll read it, but I think it might be better that she talk to you directly on this one. Sure. Uh, he is unmuted, there? Jason. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, y'all. Um, yeah, I had a uh, quick question. I had noticed um, that it was advertised that you could start a parking session with a guest checkout and not enter any contact um, information. And I had tried doing it and I wasn't able to. So I didn't know if you could demonstrate or kind of walk through that process. Molly, do you have the app downloaded? I do. Yeah, that's why. So if you're, uh, if you're an app user, it's gonna direct you to, right to the app. If you Got take okay. the app off your phone and delete it, then you'll, be, you'll go right to, um, and if you're on an Apple phone, you'll go to App Clips. So it'll take, it, you know, it looks like an app, um, but it'll take you directly to the guest checkout portion. But if you've already downloaded the app and you're using it, it's gonna direct you to that zone. So that's a feature that we implemented because if you're an app user, why do you need guest checkout? You don't. Um, you're just going to go, it'll, it'll circumvent, it'll reroute you right back to the, the actual zone through your GPS. Okay. So if somebody does not have the application loaded and they scan the QR Correct. code, then Correct. that's where they would, um, and I don't know if you would be able to demonstrate that process or if you have any material Don can maybe send out afterwards. Sure. I can send you material. Absolutely. Great. But yeah, but, but it's, it's because you have the app downloaded. Okay. Great. Thank you. Welcome. All right, so moving on. Oops. All right, there's the results. So Kevin discussed this a little bit, so we can probably skip this slide. But uh, yes, in the six months, he went from 3% to 45% of transactions and continuing to grow. And I, you know, we're going to see, it'll be very interesting to sort of report back on this because this summer is going to be maybe a little more life back to normal. So you're going to see, you know, 
there's a more tourism, more transactions happening, I would assume, Kevin, is that right? Absolutely. Perfect. And then the impact. I mean, Kevin, you can speak to this as well. So yeah, uh, those cost savings are real. Um, and there's intangible uh, time and energy spent and reports. There's, there's some intangibles here too uh, that have to do with uh, monitoring and maintaining meters. And then there's real cost as well. Um, you know, I monitor that text support line and I have to tell you, I do not ever get, I really don't, I don't get any complaints about moving to this. Um, honestly, my focus over the next couple of months is placing the scan marks in more convenient locations. That's my focus going forward. Um, flexibility, perfect example is for the first time we went to two hour zones. That's premium parking. Again, remember I said that Port Jefferson is this small ring and quite honestly, every single parking spot is premium and convenient. But if you wanna say that the ones that are the spaces that are right up against businesses and literally 20 feet or 10 feet away from a business, you can call them super premium. So we made those two hour spaces. We used Honk, uh, I think we have some pictures of that. We, we use Honk to create a two hour zone overnight, literally. Um, we use some um, really unique signage, flexible post. Uh, we got a buy-in from the merchants and that's important because the merchants were experienced residents parking in these very, very premium spaces. So we fixed this by creating a two hour zone with park, um, scan the park. And then the key component of this is enforcement, right? Because you, can, you can't tell the meters not to buy more than two, uh, two hours. That's really important, right? So you go to a meter, you can pay 24 hours. We can't make those meters stop at two hours. Uh, and if we could do it, we'd have to actually go into the meter, change the programming, and then unprogram it when there was no paid parking. It's impossible. So the big part of this is enforcement, and that's in place. So voila, we've created premium parking in a two-hour zone. Perfect. Um, and then this is just a little bit more of um, how we've worked with Port Jeff to kind of figure out, you know. Yeah, I have an example they, of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. things that they needed. So go ahead, Kevin, like just, just stuff that, you know, I will say this too, as things come up in parking, I'll, oftentimes we realize, you know, we'll be working with customers and they'll say to us, you know, I've got this issue. This is kind of almost how that honk passed, that flex pack of parking I, I mentioned earlier came to pass. Like, I've got this issue and how do we work with this? And then we'll say, oh my God, you don't even know. We've got like this, we can do this, we can do that. Da, da, da. Like there's there's just a lot going on in the system that we've worked with. So Kevin can kind of speak to this idea of promo codes for restaurants. Yeah, I think uh, we'll go a step further. One, one thing we did for a very robust restaurant um, on Main Street uh, is this particular restaurant, uh, you're going to love this actually, uh, used to come in every two weeks and buy 500 to 1,000 physical tokens um, which are probably now relics and collectibles, if anybody wants one, because we don't use them anymore, but we use them for over 10 years and they would hand them out to their employees to, to park. So like, think about this. Uh, you, you have to like hand a hundred tokens to an employee. Um, they have to put them in the machine during bad weather. Uh, you have to actually account for that. We took that, we took that all away and we made this restaurant its own zone. So when employees come in, for the shift, they timestamp in, and then right next to the timestamp is a QR code, and they do that as well. At the end of the month, we simply invoice them for everything that comes under their zone, because in fact, they became their own zone. And voila, that's how easy that has become for us. Um, it, it was a task to sell and maintain uh, tokens. It was actually done through our treasury, so that's all gone now. So we've digitized that process. The white label aspect of what you're talking about, again, you heard what my background was. It was extremely important, right down to colors and look and feel. Um, Park Port Jeff, our, if you will, hashtag, that was all very important to me. I imparted that on the village, they agreed. So that also worked well, that we didn't necessarily uh, want the 
vendor, the company to be at the forefront of the branding going out there. We really wanted Port Jefferson to be at the forefront. No ego ah. here. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> we just didn't feel like, you know, we agreed like that the beauty of this is that we can design the artwork to be anything that you want it to be, right? It can be your logo, your name, your everything. It, it doesn't need to say honk all over it. So that's the nice part. And then people, at least also people feel when they're using the product, they feel super comfortable, right? Because then they know that this is a Port Jefferson approved product that they can use. So I just want to kind of sum this up, um, you know, from the honk side itself, we've got the guest checkout piece, which is honk tap. Um, we talked about promo codes. Kevin just mentioned that sort of idea of merchant validation. We've got a couple other solutions that we work with around merchant validation. Um, it can be anywhere, right? Honk tap can go on a pole. It can go on a, the side of a wall. It can go on a you know, on the side of a meter, we can put signs that jut out from the side of the pay stations. Um, the idea of sort of that's the beauty of this contactless payment solution versus like higher capital costs, power sources, bandwidth, maintenance, service requirements. Um, so just, you know, as a whole, um, we can say that the, the relationship between Honk and Port Jefferson has been an incredible success. It's been a lot of fun for us to work through and Kevin's been a great client and uh, we, I would definitely say we've had a lot of fun together. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of it. I would hope that there's some more questions. We can open up the floor now. Kevin and I can talk about anything you need to. Um, and we really appreciate your time today. Thank you for sure. Uh, excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you. And it was very straightforward and can certainly relate to the audience. So it was very well-rounded and we appreciate uh, what you've done. We do have a couple um, out there. And again, I apologize if I missed this specifically, but maybe Kevin, uh, what do you use for code enforcement staff to monitor their lots? You know, what, what is the mechanism there? How do, how do your parking attendants or your parking facilitators monitor the lots? So literally, I can talk an hour about this. <laughs> um, I really can because this was this was uh, nothing short of a debacle for us, um, to be very honest. Because our meter company didn't they didn't have an enforcement application. And I don't want to mention names, but we're using one company, and I see the question. And I'll go offline with that question, but I will tell you we've tackled it, and. Um, for the audience, what's important to know is we've married uh, both the digital and the meter such that we see it all in one device with one printer, very easy. And this just happened. Um, I took a few trips, I went to some locations and we're extremely happy with what we came up with. So we've, we've tackled that prob problem. But I think I think it's an entirely, uh, entirely different uh, conversation that we can have, uh, but it's successful, we've, we're good. And for Casey, uh, you may or may not be able to specifically get into this, but really what, you know, how many other New York municipalities or university are using Park Mobile? What is, I, I guess, what is your market penetration here in New York State? Do you have a lot of customers? Do you have a few? What, where do you stand in New York State specifically? Yeah, we have a couple definitely um, uh, that we work with intensely but there's there's a bunch on the horizon so there's stuff that we're we're working on right now that we'll be announcing in the next little while that we're excited about um but off the top of my head i mean all pro i know is on this call and they're actually i have amazing stories about all pro because they were one of our first customers um and i have a very nice place in my heart for the people at all pro so <laughs> um but uh but yeah i i don't off the top of my head i i'm not gonna list but Okay, so it looks like if there's not any more questions, you get a lot of positive feedback here. Um, if there's anything you'd like to close with, um, I would also like to note here that the presentation will be posted on our New York State Parking and Transportation Association website. Um, so if anybody uh, was not able to join us today or had registered and not able to attend, uh, they can certainly, all our members can view this presentation. And we will keep that up for, you know, definitely a few months. And we, we traditionally have done this with our webinars and it gives people good content and they can go back to it and see what was discussed. And, you know, it's again, really, really excellent job. And it's, 
it's so nice to see that um, all of us are coming together again. We continue to have very successful webinars. Uh, the weather is certainly turning here in the Northeast. Uh, and again, I'm very, very thankful of our everybody on the call here, not only our New York State Parking and Transportation Association members, but our friends from the New England Parking Council, which we also invite to these webinars, and anybody else that's been uh, on the call. So uh, Casey and Kevin, uh, great job. If you have anything else to add, um, that would be a good time. I just want to say that, um, uh, you know, if anybody has any questions, please reach out. Uh, we would absolutely love to discuss our products and our services and, uh, and our company as a whole. Um, and, uh, and thank you to Kevin for everything. <laughs> We're very You're grateful. Welcome. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for allowing us to speak today because, uh, you know, in these times, it's hard. We can't move around all over the place and go and visiting people. Um, but uh, it's, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure today for sure. Is there another question? I can't see the chat, but there. Oh, we got them all. So all right. Um, all good. And again, thank you so much. We'll, we'll be in touch very soon. And again, for any association business, if anybody wants to reach out to me directly, uh, please feel free. So uh, everybody have a great week, have a great summer, and we'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you. Everybody soon. Thank you so much. Thanks all. Be well.